everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Plays Binding of Isaac after Birth Plus. Five wins. It's just it's a little baby start, but it is something. So, oh, dude. Right off the bat, let me tell you. Good stats. Minus HP, but we can live with that. Teleport 2.0, especially like the earlier you can get this item, the happier you're gonna be. I really think there's a there's like a lesson to be learned about the the transient nature of streaks in Isaac. For me, at least. <laughs> Don't spawn an enemy. Thank you. You know, I would have obviously is that a tinted rock? No. I would have obviously preferred not to have lost. However, losing one run does not devalue the runs that came before it. Or the runs that came after it. You know what I mean? All we can do on any given run is win once. You know, that's basically all it comes down to. It does carry a little less gravitas. That, uh, you know, this is not win 55 or whatever. Instead, you know, it could be win 6. However, what are you going to do? You know, at the end of the day... All you can really do in Isaac, if, you, if you're trying to go for a streak, if you're just playing in general casually, you can only increment the counter by one or reset it to zero. Unless you're, I mean, if you have a negative streak, it's different. But if you're trying to build a winning streak, there's only two possible outcomes. Wins plus plus. Or reset wins open parentheses, close parentheses. Yes, I would probably build that out into its own method call because I get the I, I call it more often than I would like. Um, so you know what? We we called reset wins one time five six runs ago. It's a bummer. However, we've been calling wins plus plus ever since. So got to remember. Hold on. We still get deal with the devil on the first floor. I think. So we'll, we'll try to find our second secret room first. Did we already place a bomb there? Don't talk to me. We might have. <laughs> Let's get the heck out of this floor. Um, I really, I think there's, a, without being too uh, heady about it, I think there's a lesson to be learned there in life as well, in a broad sense. You know, did you have a bad day yesterday? Okay. That sucks. We've all been there. And we'll all be there again. But you can't control yesterday. Once it's out there, it's out there. All you can do today is, uh, you know, your name plus plus or your name reset streak to zero. So let's work together. For me personally, for my own glorification and get to the plus plus. You could use plus equals one if you want. It doesn't... It, it really, it, it's just whatever you consider more readable, in my opinion. I'm not really worried about what's faster. You know, we're not building surgical systems here, you know, uh, software that controls the linking of docking modules to international space stations. We're, you know, we're riding like uh, Magic the Gathering pack opening simulators. So let's not worry about it too much, you know what I mean? Now, Razor, I like. It is at least a defensive orbital. This is also like the best shop. I'm very happy about that. Now, there could be a battery charge in here. Not getting an error room on the first floor is annoying. There is not a battery charge. There's Ace of Clubs and a Death Card. Um, not getting an uh, error room on the first floor is pretty annoying, but we can, we can work through it. What we want to do is find Secret Room, Second Secret Room. We're going to get a deal with the Devil, then we get Error Room guaranteed. So we'd really like to find a way to get more bombs. I mean, just good, getting more bombs is nice. Never gonna turn on my nose at that. Don't you might hear the the melancholic whine of Ruka in the background. He's locked out of the office. It, it's you know, it, it's hard for me to be the sympathetic character here because he's a cat and he's a cutie. So people are always gonna assume that you know he's sad because of something that's in my purview. It's not the case, and he's not even sad. 
He's he's a great actor. He has been tormenting my other son Tomo. You know what he uh, what Tomo did yesterday to deserve getting beaten up? He took a poop. That was his thing. How dare he, right? How Tomo? How dare you use the litter box in the presence of Lord Ruka? So Ruka, you know, he's we're still he's a cat. He doesn't understand what he's doing wrong, but we're giving him attention, but we're also like, you know, when he gets a little too excited, we got to sequester ourselves. I mean, moreover, we got to protect Tomo here. I mean, they're not getting into fights that are like, you know, dangerously violent, but simultaneously like Here's the the cycle of Ruka right now is I let him into the office and then he jumps up on my desk and then I put him in the box and then he jumps up on my desk and then I put him outside of my office and close the door and then he meows. We got the boxes set up. We got everything set up to make this a cat friendly environment. He just my man he's one of those and it's a bad habit even though I love him but he's one of those uh, individuals who is only happy not if he and his neighbor have the equivalent amount of stuff. He would rather get a meal that's a 2 out of 10 if Tomo's getting a 1 than have both of them get a 10 out of 10 meal. So I only got to take one pill in there, which is pretty annoying. But I do remember for 7 cents, we should be able to buy a black candle. No, that was the last shop. But I mean, still. Humbling Bundle's very good. Alright, we'll move on. It's a good floor so far. It's a good run so far. You know, we got HP out of our deal with the Devil, along with the Nine Lives. That doesn't happen all that often. We'll, uh, we'll take it down to the next floor. Curse of the Unknown. Nah, it's okay. Anyway. Dude, this is the second Isaac episode of the day. Haven't even told you what day of the week it is yet. It's Wednesday. <laughs> oh, you don't even need to pick it up. What does Wednesday mean? Wednesday is, you know, wake up, gym, Isaac, NLSS, and then probably we'll play a little Katana Zero to finish the day off here. Yesterday was Tuesday. It was fun. Um, played the... Uh, and if it hasn't gone up on YouTube yet, it will soon, because I, you know, I'd be an idiot not to port it to YouTube. But we did a Gungeon run that covered all ten floors in the game. Previously, uh, Corey and Austin have been like, hey, you should do a ten floor Gungeon run. Lull. And I said lull in return, because it sounded so ridiculous. But then, on yesterday's uh, stream, I guess why not? First run of the day. Managed to get all 10 floors. Mostly because of one incredible gun. The black hole gun. And then also an item that gave us infinite ammo when we stood in uh, a single spot. But still, it was an accomplishment for me. Okay, don't take it away from me. We also played... A little solo escape from Tarkov. I understand Tarkov is a game I've hit the resident sleeper button on a few times. But I, I find like solo aggro runs in Tarkov really fun. To the extent that I actually played it a little bit off camera last night. Um, I think that's a it's a very interesting game. I don't would I recommend it? I I can't not recommend it, but simultaneously it is like I can't remember the the buy-in, but it's pretty expensive for early access, but it's, a, it's an interesting game for sure. Then we played Terraria, and Terraria is like... It's in a weird spot. I'm just leveling with you. There's a, And I apologize, a lot of people out there are like, I love watching Terraria. Some of the... And I'm not throwing anybody under the bus, you know? You like what you like. I was talking about it in the Unity Discord yesterday, and I was like... You know, I think where we're at is like Austin was like a hundred percent in for Terraria now he's like 75 I was like 75 in for Terraria now I'm like 50 people and it you know I'm not trying to throw chat under the bus but you you kind of create the environment you want to see sometimes people are like you know I'm I don't know how to min max in Terraria I'm doing my best I'm taking feedback from Austin and Chad and I'm implementing it 
And then after like an hour of doing that, people are like, NL clearly doesn't care. He's not even paying attention. And I'm like, you want to see somebody not pay attention? Get ready. I know, deep in your... Sorry, I've been having voice cracks. There's a lot of recording lately. Plus, uh, fifth puberty. Anyway, so like, they, they, you know, there's that. But I'm, you know, I'm just... We're, we're having a giggle here. I'm not actually upset about it. Then I think Dan and Malf were both like maybe 50% in. And Malf is like 25% in and Dan's like 1% in. <laughs> he spends like a third of every Terraria stream all tabbed or watching the NFL draft lottery. So I, uh, though I understand that it will make some people upset, I would not be surprised if Terraria as a playthrough is not long for this world. And uh, I, I, I definitely understand that some people will be unhappy with that. I think it, it was given an honest try, but to be honest, part of the problem is is that it's on expert mode, so it's like easy enough for Austin, but too hard for me, Malf, and Dan without knowing the progression that we go through, so we just get shredded every time we step out of the base. But to Austin's credit, he's like, here's what you need to do, and then when I try to do it, I get killed. It's not his fault. It's, it's my fault, plus, you know, the difficulty mode's fault, but anyway. I don't really want to get into the, what we're going to play on Team Unity Politics. It's been too much of a topic for conversation lately. But, um, yeah, I think, we, you know, we gave Terraria quite a decent... Ugh, we almost made it there. Quite a decent chunk of time. Maybe we'll keep playing it. I'm just saying no promises is what I'm saying right now. It's one of those things where it's like... Here, let me let me hydrate before I say something I regret. It, it's something that we, we, Mathis, Dan, and I talked about in, like, a Descenders episode that a lot of people gave me feedback on, and we're like, you know, this is, uh, it was a cool episode. It was cool to hear behind the curtain. And I'm, you know, that's why I bring it up. Anytime I bring up something related to, uh, you know, community management issues that are frustrating me, I never bring it up from the perspective of, like, people have been too mean to me. I'm gonna pretend to be, uh, sad so that people give me compliments. I find it, uh, it uncomfortable <laughs> when people are like I love you you know and I'm like thank you but also I please don't tell me that because it's just it's not like it's not okay it's just uh, it's weird for me so I definitely I never do it as like a sympathy ploy like you know six people called me dumb please call me smart it's more just like I bring it up as a frustration uh, you know, just to let people know, because I think a lot of the times, you know, there are people who are well-meaning and just don't realize that they're being toxic. And if you tell them they're toxic, their first reaction is always like, I'm toxic? Well, now I feel bad that I'm toxic, so aren't you toxic for making me feel bad? And then once they get over that refractory period, you know, we can start to build a healthier, uh, you know, parasocial relationship together. You know what I mean? But, uh... We, we talked about it in a Descenders episode, and I think me and Dan are on the same page here. Dan and I are not people, in my opinion, who got into streaming specifically to play video games, if that makes sense. I love video games. I, I spend, you know, the bulk of my working life playing them. I'm passionate about them. I enjoy them. But it's not like I started streaming because I was like, you know what I want to do professionally is manipulate a digital character on screen. What I want to do is entertain. Some days are better about that than others. So it's it's been frustrating when we play or games that maybe people aren't super into the game, but the actual quality of the product on the stream, i.e. the entertainment value is really good, and people are like, whatever. Yeah, like the banter was good and whatever. Just ice me, dude. Yeah, the oh, I didn't even use my... How long has it been since I used Teleport 2.0? <laughs> you, you, contact damage does too much. Okay, fair enough. Whatever. We don't need, we don't need to go. Oh, we do need to go there because otherwise we'll teleport back in. Um, people go like, yeah, the banter was good, but it would have been better if instead of like, you know, a 3D shooter, they were playing a 2D survival game, you know? And I, I, I'm distilling it down to a, a reductionist perspective that is not necessarily fair. However... It is kind of like, if I'm representing my position, I think it's an apt way to represent it. Now, it's partly like, 
is due to the fact that streaming is super weird and it's like a collaboration between somebody who you know, is either an entertainer or like a really good player of a game or, you know, just sort of exists and, um, you know, sits in a chair for eight hours collecting a paycheck, no offense. But like, that's kind of like, you know, what the interesting dilemma is, yo, thank you. Is like, I want to be entertaining, but it's not just a show where like, you know, it's a podcast just talking about nothing, you know what I mean? People also come for the game choice, which is uh, is something you have to respect. So that's the, the where where Dan and I have been at has been like, man, like that one PUBG stream we did was like the high, and everybody in the, all the people participating in the stream agree that they're like that was like the highest quality like banter, conversation, entertainment value we've had from like an individual perspective in a month. But there's a proportion of people who are like that was really fun and then there's a proportion of people who are like I hate PUBG and will not support this and you're like you know I the, you got principles I'll give you that but it's it, it creates a complex situation for team unity in general if that makes sense I agree we played a lot of PUBG I also I mean I'm holding these two kind of conflicting notions in my head simultaneously here we played a lot of PUBG simultaneously there's a reason we played a lot of PUBG. There's, you know, I played a lot of Isaac too. I played a lot of Slay the Spire. Played a lot of Gungeon at this point. Um, you know, it, it works for a Team Unity formula. That's not to say we'll be playing like a, a ton of PUBG in the future. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. But, you know, we, we've really... I, I mean, here's the frustrating part from the Team Unity perspective. Sorry, Tomo wants to leave here. Goodbye, my son. And if you disagree with me, that's fine. I just... Please do us all the service of not, you know... Oh, well, I guess it's not okay to have a dissenting opinion anymore. It's not really where I'm getting that from. I'm just giving you my two cents. You're, you're better than that. You don't have to argue from the perspective of, uh, you know, using those emotional tricks in your favor, okay? We can do this together, work it out as adults, but... Um, my The difficulty from a Team Unity perspective, or at least the frustration to some extent, is that we've been trying new stuff. You know, we played, uh, even if you ignore all the battle royales, Farming Sim, Minecraft, Terraria recently, Morale, Hunting Simulator, you know, we were uh, The Hunt, I should say. The Hunter, I should say, because The Hunt is a, a different game altogether. Um, we've been uh, we've been trying new stuff, and we've been really, like, putting in a good faith, honest effort to play games that are not first-person battle royales to figure out what, you know, what would work for the show. And then whenever we... Play like a little vacation of one week of PUBG. People are like, ugh. They always play PUBG. You know, you gotta meet us. It's so easy to be negative, I guess. Is I'm, I'm still, I'm working hard. I think I've done a pretty good job, honestly. And making 2019 a little bit more positive. A little bit more, uh, you know, constructive. Because negativity is fine. I was talking with this uh, with Kate yesterday, actually. I think this is a really good analogy. So I was just hydrating. Kate was having some... She, she takes Japanese lessons. She was having some frustrations with her Japanese uh, teacher because her Japanese teacher would give her um, a task. Like, hey, summarize this. And then Kate would summarize it. And she's, like, fluent in Japanese. That's not to say, like, she couldn't improve. Because she's still taking lessons. But um, Kate would summarize it. And then the professor would be like, or the teacher would be like, uh, this is good, but if you wanted it to be better, you could do this. And then she would do that and like rework her summary. And then she'd present it to the professor again and be like, this is good again, but if you want it to be even better, you could do this. And I realize, and this is not to insult Kate's Japanese teacher, but the, the reality of the situation is... Oh, we didn't need to do that. Um, it's actually always very, very easy to come up with a piece of criticism that would make something more perfect. Like, that is not a difficult task at all. Something could always work harder. It could always uh, taste better. It could always look better. It could always sound nicer, you know? 
What we're trying to do uh, with, with Team Unity, and it's not like this is coming from a, a, a place of like extreme personal frustration. But at the end of the day, the mission statement for Team Unity is like we're trying to create an entertaining product with games that are uh, cooperative, but you know, the product that's actually, like the game being played is meant to be secondary to the, the banter that's being had. And, you know, it's easy to say like, okay, well, just play Terraria, but have the banter that you'd have in PUBG or something like that. It would be nice if that happened, but it's kind of hard to keep that banter going when every two seconds we also have people that are like, well, you know, obviously you're not going to be able to beat the twins. You still have meteor armor. What you got to do is get some pyromite. You go down to, and, you, you know, you get the idea. Like, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that takes over the executive functions from the start of the brain. And it's all very useful feedback within the context of, like, you know, if our main goal was playing Terraria well, that would be the invaluable feedback. It's like, I, the way I see it is that it's not, like, I don't think I, like, we're mad in Team Unity. I don't think the audience is mad. Or maybe the audience is a little mad sometimes. But, um, you know, I see it as, like, a, a misaligned vision. Like, the audience started watching Team Unity because it was funny. And then we said, like, okay, we'll play Terraria. And now that we're playing Terraria, the audience is like, why aren't you building a, you know, a Hellfire Loom? You're still using your basic Loom. And meanwhile, you know, Dan is going, yeet! And they're like, that was funny in PUBG. But, can we please, why are you laughing? This is your job. Anyway, I'm just giving you my perspective of, uh... And I think it's constructive, believe it or not. It might sound like I'm arguing in bad faith. That's not my intention. I think by playing Minecraft and by playing uh, by playing Terraria, uh, we've actually like we picked up a lot of perspective about stuff that works for Team Unity and stuff that doesn't work for Team Unity. You know, maybe you know Terraria. We gave it an honest shake, and for all I know, may st still continue to play it. For the time being, until we finish it, maybe. Or maybe that'll be the last time we play it. But, um... Range, range down. Uh, wait, are we on Depths 2? We're on Depths 1, good God. Um... I, you know, that's a game that maybe is, is a better fit for a different... Slice of Northern Lion-related content. Maybe that's something that's better for Malf and I to play. Or me, Malf, and Austin, and Rob, or something like that. Or or maybe, you know, just not, uh, you know, in the, in the Team Unity slot, but with the same cast. You get the idea. You know, maybe it's not 100% a fit. I how dare you. It's not to say Terraria is a bad game, but maybe just... <laughs> and especially coming off of, of having played Minecraft for, like... Four months. We probably could have used a little bit more of a palate cleanser, to be fair. It's just weird, dude. It's a weird business. Because people are like, I love you, and you helped me through a hard time in my life. And I'm like, I don't deserve that. I didn't do anything. And then they're like, but simultaneously, F you. You didn't finish playing Terraria. And I'm like, jeez, you can't, can't win for losing, brother. Dad's lost coin. That's a range up, at least. Void. I mean, I actually think we should void just because we're going to run out of efficacy for the uh, golden teleporter. And we didn't get as much use out of it as I thought we would, but that's okay. Anyway, I mean, again, you feel free to call me whatever you want to call me for saying only mildly positive things about Terraria within the context of it not necessarily fitting our group format that well. Um, but what it really comes down to is more like, uh, you know, it's, it's a bizarre industry. People are like, I want to see you play this. And you're like, well, I don't really want to play this, you, but you could watch like any other people play it. And they're like, no. I want to watch you play this. I know what I said. <laughs> oh, we we teleported to the... Uh, 
to the item room because the blank card stars must have overridden um, our teleport 2.0. Weird. Okay, there we go. Well, uh, dude, this is a weird one. Like, I with Isaac's heart, if it were not for Isaac's heart, I think we could slow play this. Given the opportunity, I would actually love to rush this one down because Isaac's heart is just is such an extreme pain in the butt, to be honest with you. Anyway, it's just been on my mind. I, I hope that you don't take it uh, like I've been down on the community. I was... Uh, what's the way? There, there's got to be a good word for this. I was... Not upset, but, and not even like, you know, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. Because, you know, it was like, frustrating. I was frustrated and a little offended, for sure. Insulted is a good way to describe it. With some of the response to Sekiro, even though I understand the role that, you know, my own uh, stubbornness, to use the most polite word, played into why people were getting frustrated. But I got over it, and you know, I think we worked it through together. It's just, it's, it's been on my mind, mostly, you know, first it was Sekiro, and then, you know, in the aftermath of that, um, you know, Dan and I and Mathis played the Descenders episodes, we had a nice frank conversation about it, and then we're kind of in like the same position from a Terraria standpoint right now, where people are like, you know, <laughs> I, have to ex I have to explain the... Some elements of chat on a regular basis, like, hey, if you, uh, like Terraria, stop spamming stuff like, this is boring, why are they so bad? Because the product on screen will suffer because you're, uh, you know, disheartening all the members of Team Unity from wanting to play it in the future. And they go, well, if you didn't want to be disheartened, you shouldn't be so bad. And I'm like, okay, I, you know, some people can't be reasoned with. Most people can. I just don't want, I'm trying to defend the game because you're insulting the game. So I would, I'm insulting a human being to make the game feel better. That's a little bit, okay, it's as spicy as I'm willing to get, but it's the truth. Anyway. Again, I it <laughs> choked on the words in my mouth. It's a collaborative effort. The entertainment is a, is a collaboration between chat and stream. You know what I mean? Or between chat and like the product that's on screen. The chat and the streamer. The best streams are streams like yesterday. Tarkov was fun. Chat's having a good time. I'm having a good time. But you gotta recognize, you know, at some point... <coughs> I really did choke on the words. It's like, uh, you know, being in like a bad relationship at some point. When a stream starts to go south... You know, it's up to the streamer, I think, first and foremost, to try to pull it out because, you know, it is their job. But, um, you know, when people start going like, this is boring, what are they doing, I hate this, blah, blah, blah. You know, streamers who can read, which is about 93% of us, uh, are like, you know, nobody cares or, well, very few people care, I think, about actually, like, being bad on stream. The thing that's very frustrating is being boring. Like, being boring is like a cardinal sin. You're like, why am I even streaming right now? If, I, if I'm if i boring you, then, like, honestly, I should just log off. And I think that's where, like, the conflation happens sometimes. Is people are like, bad play equals I'm not having fun equals I need to tell the streamer that so they can fix it. And the streamer is like, you know, it's, it's confusing is all I'm trying to say. It hasn't actually been on my mind that much. Ever since, uh, you know, Sekiro ended, at least. Mostly because, like, after it ended, I became the greatest player of video games you've ever seen. But let me just point out here. We actually do not need the Chaos card. In fact, you know, to call it useless might not be fair. But it's not actually useful because we're going to teleport as soon as we, uh, as soon as we get it. This is a weird one. I actually feel like we do not want Potato Peeler uh, in any context. I don't think we care about that either, but we don't want Potato Peeler in any context because it's going to make uh, it's gonna make us use HP. So the Sun card is much better. Yeah, that, that's, that's a big get for us. Anyway, I'm just saying. 
And at the end of the day, there's not really much incentive. Like, if you're kind of like an element in chat, you don't want to be positive. What's the incentive for you to be positive? You know, I get financially compensated for my stream. You don't get financially compensated for being nice in chat. I understand the argument. I'm just saying. If Terraria ends, don't freak out. <laughs> <laughs> it's not ending because people are like, I want to rip off chat. It's ending because we're like, we think we could put on a better show if we were playing a different game. That's pretty much what it comes down to. Now, whether or not, if it happens, people would see it that way, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't matter. At the, whole, at the end of the day, it's not really a huge problem, but... Excuse me. Um, oh, you know what we have is... Uh, we must have sucked up the... Uh, the deck of cards at some point, because we get a new card every time we press the space bar. Which sucks, because the sun card would have been awesome for us. Anyway. I've stopped apologizing for, like, these inside... Inside? These inside baseball episodes, because, like, predominantly, it seems like, um, people enjoy them. I think, you know, it's okay to have... To, to have these kind of conversations, and, and to... You know, bring it up with your community, as long as you bring it up in a way, like... That's constructive, if that makes sense. I do think a lot of streamers do a terrible job of community management, just in the sense that, like... You know, somebody could be a subscriber for, like, two years. You know, they're paying you their money because they like your content. And you lose sight of that when they say, like, eh, it's not a great stream today. And they just, like, ban them or go, like, how dare you say something like that. Yeah, it's kind of, like, a toxic thing to say, but, you know, it could be phrased better. But, you know, you're, you're talking to somebody who's, who's, like, a, you know, they're a paying... Why am I... Oh, because of Isaac's heart, right? They're a paying subscriber, you know? It's kind of like... To a, a lesser extent, it's like, you know, I'm paying for HBO, but I kind of think Game of Thrones sucks right now. So I'm out there going like, hey, show kind of sucks. Now, the difference is I'm not DMing the creators or tweeting them directly and going like, hey, your show blows, dude. I think that's like way over the line. Obviously, I don't even think it needs to be said. But, uh, you know, there's, there's parallels. The Game of Thrones stuff is annoying me. Let me explain. I've, I've got a theory for media uh, and, and the blogosphere. And it's probably been said by people smarter than myself, but I can't read. So as a result, um, I don't know if it's been written about. But let's just call it like the I'm rubber, you are glue. No, that doesn't make sense. Let's call it the amplification theory of media criticism, okay? So here's what happens. New Game of Thrones... Not that good, in my opinion. That's Whether you agree with or disagree with that, it doesn't matter. It's tangential to the conversation. Uh, and I'm, I'm being sincere. Don't get bogged down in the minutiae here. So, some people created a petition to get Game of Thrones Season 8 remade. Obviously stupid, but it has like um, a few thousand signatures. And a few thousand seems like a large number until you realize that there's like tens of millions of people watching the show. So, now, um, there's this petition out there. And the blogs have started to pick it up and they're making posts like, Whiny Game of Thrones fans petition HBO to remake season 8. Okay, so now these like, you know, 10,000 people who signed the petition. Uh... They've been blogged about in a blog that has a readership on this article of 10 times that, if not more. So then the that post gets shared around now, um, because the blog is, like, influential, uh, on places like Twitter. So now it gets, like, you know, that tweet from that blog gets 75,000 retweets and, uh, you know... Four million people see it now, and it, it leads to all these takes like, well, I just miss the days where, like, uh, when something was bad or we didn't like it, we just accepted it. But kids these days, well, they don't face any real hardship, so all they do is complain about a TV show and blah, 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 blah. Um, this is what, and, you know, I've come to, I, once you start to think about it, you'll see it everywhere. It's basically like, something happens. Uh... A very small amount of people react in an unacceptable way. That unacceptable way, or silly way, stupid way, however you want to describe it, 
gets picked up by a, a larger outlet that amplifies the stupidity. Because it's being amplified by this larger source, all of a sudden it leads to the belief. Hold on. It leads to the belief among the populace that, you know, everybody who hates Season 8 of Game of Thrones wants it to be remade. Or even like... It's not even like a, a large minority of people who like Game of Thrones Season 8. It's like 10,000 people who are just like... You know, probably half of them signing it just because, like, yeah, I don't like it. I'll sign it for the meme, you know? But now there's a narrative, like... Man, fans are so whiny the show's not turning out like they wanted it to. They, they'll just keep remaking it until I get the story arc I want. And, you know... It's just... It's like this disingenuous circle jerk on social media happens. I, I'm, you know... Feel free, if you're, you're working in media studies, you can do your dissertation on this. I don't promise you'll actually be able to graduate, because I just made it up off the top of my head, but... I see it all the time. There was another thing. So, like, you know, there's a light spoilers about a character's name in Game of Thrones. You know, after uh, an episode earlier in the season, like, one dude tweeted, like, Arya is a Mary Sue. And Mary Sue is basically... A female character who, who gets an undeserved uh, character development just due to their gender, right? Um, it's a dumb opinion, for sure, in my estimation. Uh, and it's held by a, just a tiny little sliver of the whole pie chart of people watching the show. But, well-meaning people who don't uh, consider the scope of their reach would retweet it. Let's just suck these up, dude. And be like, I can't believe that people hold this opinion. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, it's not people. It's not It's not one dude. But it's like... 250 dudes. <laughs> out, of a, out of millions. And now, like, they're... I'm not saying you spotlighted their opinion. And, like, made them... Uh, like, oh, you've made them famous and just helped out their cause. It's not like that. Really, what it is instead is just like, brother, if you want to be mad about some dumbass opinions on the internet, boy, you gotta grow up, cause I, you will find some insane ramblings out there. If you think that's bad, like, if you want to just find the worst opinion you could possibly find and then be mad that one person on earth has that opinion, you got a long life ahead of you. What is productive instead, I think, is to, you know, recognize... Uh-oh. This is gonna be an interesting finish with Isaac's heart. You know, recognize the consensus where it stands. And, uh... You know, report... I don't want to say honestly, because I don't think it's dishonest to report that there's a petition. You know, as literally true. However, you know, if there's one lemonade stand in Missouri that charges $75 for a glass of lemonade. Ten-year-olds charging $75 for lemonade. You know, you, you get the idea. Like, you're kind of shaping the way that people will feel about the story based on the fact that you've chosen to give it airtime. You know what I mean? And also, like, not to mention on top of that, just like the headline you chose in and of itself. That's my two cents on the subject. Feel free. It's, it's the... But I could the amplification theory of the blogosphere. It's it always and you know I'm not I'm not an anti-media guy to any extent of the world. I'm in the media. I'm part of the establishment. Whether you know it would help me and probably dude, this is gonna be weird. It would behoove me to refer to myself as not being a part of the establishment because it would make me seem way cooler. But. I really thought if I just stood there, I'd be fine. I think it is a little disingenuous. Dude, I think we're gonna lose. First off, do I still have... I don't have any lives left. Okay. Let's not just give up, but... We'll look for the second secret room. Anyway, all I'm saying is I'm not an anti-media guy, but... You know, the way you choose to report on stories shapes the way that they 
are perceived. Okay, so we did get an HP upgrade, thanks to our puberty pill from earlier. Chekhov's puberty pill. Dude, Lemon Party is, like, kind of decent. Um, I don't, I don't even remember what we got sucked up here, but... Let's see what our card is. Okay, it's two of hearts. This one's really, uh... Oh, we gotta change out Golden Horseshoe for sure. This one's really... It basically just comes down to the fact that we lost... Uh, or we, we picked up Isaac's heart accidentally. If we don't pick up Isaac's heart, this run is totally okay. Because we picked up Isaac's heart, it's, it's called into question. Um, so we do want Cracked Crown. But I do want to use this again. And the reason is just... We do get more consumables for doing it. We're also going to get a Spirit Heart. Yum Heart is not worth it. The Spirit Heart is very good. Well, Yum Heart we'll use once. Now we're on like two and a half HP, and we also have a um, we also have an Eternal Heart, which I don't remember if it protects us for one. But the thing is, we don't have to do that much damage to to kill this guy. You know, we, we don't have to shoot that many times, at least. So we do want two of hearts. So we, we get hit two times. We'll pop two of hearts. One time, I know we're safe. We actually did it. Okay, that was a very touchy one. But hey, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It helps us a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. See ya!